Well, 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 uh, great to see you folks. Great to have some friends on with us. This is the first time at Desmos Live we're streaming to YouTube and to Facebook simultaneously. We are a technology company, so that should be within our grasp. We'll see. We'll see how the internet goes right now for uh, me and all of us. I'm so happy to have some colleagues on, uh, Christopher Danielson and Jay Chow, some former uh, visitors to Desmos Live. Um, Christopher, Jay, tell them uh, where you folks are broadcasting in from and what you do at Desmos. Christopher, let them know. Yeah, so I am in St. Paul, Minnesota, in the basement of my home, and I work uh, on the curriculum side, uh, helping support the team that develops the, the uh, lessons that go into our 6th through 8th grade curriculum. AKA How about you, Jay? Professor, Professor Triangle Man. Jay, tell him. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm out of uh, sunny Hawaii. It's sunny now, so I can say that. It was not sunny like an hour ago. Um, and uh, I'm on the teaching faculty, and I do a lot of the uh, the computation layer stuff. Jay's Jay's in Hawaii right now. Great, Jay. You can't say that in any way that uh, disguises it as other than uh, an awesome brag. Um, that's great. Good for you. So uh, here's the deal. First up, folks, we got a uh, the top ten tabs of. Uh, my week and our colleagues Jay and Christopher have brought some fun things with them as well to share in these 10 tabs, kind of a potluck style. After that, Christopher's got some research to share with you folks on one of the trickiest areas of mathematics, I think, and how to teach it well and what we did with that research. Um, and then Jay's going to share one weird trick with computation layer that I think will put a smile on all of your students' faces. It did mine. So here's up first is a, what is this, a uh, uh, an image, a video, an animation of a whale, uh, nothing too special special here, I don't think. Um, wait a second, what's this movable point doing? Excuse me? What's the deal here? What's the deal here? Oh my gosh, I love this so much. You know, it's a graphing calculator and it's also a, an, a, an aquatic reserve, a marine sanctuary. The whale's all bulbous. I love it, it's just kind of like gelatinous. Anyway, this is uh, slick. I'm gonna post this and others uh, into the show notes so you can have a look at what's going on here. It's, it's truly wild. Uh, it's got this simulation feature, which um, all of our friends from the Discord, welcome back, friends. Please don't take down the stream this time. And uh, they, they've done some fun stuff here with the simulation thing. Check it out, play with it. It's not public public yet, but a um, couple more here. There's a couple more here, check it out. We got um, this right here, a slick drawing of a ping pong table. Nothing special here is there, or is there. And uh, if we turn this to zero, all of a sudden I am, I'm playing ping pong right here. It's um, it's a fact that, <laughs> that I'm awesome at ping pong. And uh, this is a, a graphing calculator ping pong game. Who did this one? Simon Lebunsky? Are you a Discord friend? Who are you, who are you Simon? It's amazing. Cool, a couple other ones here. Um, yep, we got uh, Adam Baum right here saying, hey Dan, have you, seen, have, have you seen my tweet? And the fact is, Adam, I have. Um, I love this right here. We shared with you last week um, a uh, teacher, uh, Mr. Karcher, I think. Um, he had his students making some just fantastic uh, illustrations. Has this really kind of like, I don't know, uh, like retro look to it like, or like a real digital electronic kind of vibe, kind of like Tron or, or whatever. Um, and the, the students did it with uh, individual equations for each of these absolute value graphs. Different kind of opacity, different kind of color, like really just kind of hand creating the thing, which is beautiful. And I was, I asked on the last stream, is it possible to do this with using the random right here? And uh, our colleague Adam Baum here um, uh, brought the noise, not project, rather we want reverse contrast. And isn't, isn't that something there? You can kind of like create all these right here. We got a color palette working um, and it's just only three lines right here. That's beautiful. So. Uh, Adam, thanks for that. That was a, a real delight to see. A couple others right here. Um, this came from, I think, Trey Ghosh, who's a frequent contributor to the top 10 tabs. If you press play right here, these are all graphs, I guess. So what's going on here? Any comment? For, uh, what's going on here, Jay, Christopher? Do you guys get any of this right here? This is all somewhat noise to me. You can like change some parameters. Yeah, I have no Angle. idea what's going on there. Spacing. Anyway, it's slick. I know you'll want to check cool. this out. Uh, so it's going in the show notes after the show. This next one's from Jay Chow. Jay brought a dish to the top 10 tab potluck. Uh, here it is. This one's from Desmos fellow Tim. Um, Jay, tell tell, uh, tell the folks what you like about this right here. What's on your mind? Uh, I, Yeah, um, it's 
it's a really cool visual, but it's also like a combination of, I think, two of Suzanne, like two different uh, Suzanne Von Oy uh, demos there. You have the animation and you also have that, that uh, 3D function going on. Yes, yeah, combines a couple things from Suzanne's uh, chats for sure. Anyway, you can, you can click in there and just see the timing, the timer work. Um, it's it's magic. Anyway, I also just dug that someone was like, like these graphs to me are really special, um, but there's a lot of places where you can go and make like slick graphs and interactives. What I love is seeing people um, in the Twitter thread saying like, hey, this is awesome. Can I add this to an activity which allows, I, I would imagine, students to interact in ways that build knowledge uh, that, are, that go beyond like just kind of I'm, I'm, I'm dazzled while I you know move the slider back and forth and change things. But that I, I trust that uh, Jonathan Newman here has some, some fun work for students to work on. Really cool stuff. Um, and then here's one more from Jay. Jay brought two tabs here. Uh, Jay, tell us what this is about right here. Uh, that was just, a, I think it's like a, a check-in screen or a, like starter screen for uh, students to, to get started for the day. Uh, but it, I, I like that one, it was super simple. Like there was no, it doesn't look like any computation layer or anything, they just uploaded an image. Uh, but from like that really simple start, you still get like uh, so much creativity and so many different responses coming from all sorts of students. Yeah, yeah. So I think they just have like a background image here. That's all that is, I think. And uh, yeah, and people finish the drawing is like real hot on uh, as a starter screen across like Nearpod, Pear Deck, us right now. I'm seeing this in a lot of the different Facebook forums. And uh, yeah, it's fun to see what students did with this right here. Real slick. Dig it, dig it a lot. The, uh, the keyboard one is a real is a, a real delight to, Ooh, that to me. Strong, yeah. yeah, I mean, like it's maybe a little less like visually complex than kind of this anime drawing, perhaps. But like as far as like thinking about what that might be, what those things might be, um, there's a lot there that I like. I go straight to like faces or creatures myself. Um, anyway, yeah, really cool. There was one person way down here had like uh, mountains. Love that. A um, couple more here, a couple more. Let's move over to, into act, the activity world away from um, the calculator. Loved seeing so many people using the new photo upload feature. And what a be what better mathematics to use it with than like, show me how you move symbols around to prove something's true. Um, th th that is math that I love, that we think is valuable mathematics, and it's math that like is pretty poorly served by computers a lot of the time. You know, typing that stuff in, kind of a drag, even with the math type in the, the text and input and this right here just upload that uh upload the image really cool megan thanks for sharing there uh, a couple others uh shirling donald has this component switcher screen i don't know if you folks saw if you guys saw this right here um but this is I'm, I love it. I'm so curious what the dashboard looks like, but uh, you can like this will let you use isometrics, isometric lines, Cartesian dot, you know, Cartesian plane, polar grid, uh, blank sketch, number line. I mean, that's just that's wonderful stuff right there. And I'm yeah, I'm, I, I would love to see this uh, in the wild to see what people do with this, which is why it's going where in the show notes for you folks to use. Try it out sometime. And then uh, a couple people hacked together. <clears throat> A, a, a slider so that people want to use sliders um, in kind of the narrower graph component not the full like full screen graph and so people have been doing some cool stuff that I, I, I like they also make me a little bit sad um, I don't know if you feel the same sadness I do here uh, Jay and Christopher but this is really nicely done we just should make it a lot easier I think that you know we could probably admit that there's uh, folks that do make this easier for people. So it's really great to see these things. These get shared internally in our Slack, and we all kind of like say, "Wow, our users are so creative." Are these teachers and folks? Um, and then we also say, like, we should probably make this easier. Someone else uh, created this right here, which is like a it's like a, a, another graph component that only exists to like create these slidery type of things. Anyway, I'd love to make that easier for people at some point. If you folks want that, you know, let's see some thumbs up in the chat. Hit, hit, hit uh, drop on in from Facebook. I'm not seeing a lot of Facebook uh, commenters yet. So if you're a Facebook commenter and you want this, like your vote counts, like I think trip. A lot of folks from YouTube looking to see if Facebook is working or not. Okay, and the last one here, this is a Christopher's contribution to our, our uh, potluck. Christopher, I'm gonna play this one right here and I'd love to know, like this is, what, what does this have to do with mathematics? If anything, if nothing, fine, but I'll, let's have a, have a listen here folks, it's one minute long. <laughs> This is a square. Can you guess which spot that goes the in? The square. That's right. It goes in the square hole. Yes. Okay. And how about this rectangle? That one. Also the square. That goes in there too. Yeah. Up next, 
We've got this thin rectangle. The thin rectangle. Can you guess where that goes? The thin rectangle. That's right. It goes in the square hole. And up next, a cylinder. Hmm. The circle. I think that goes in the circle. The square hole. Now we've also got this semicircle right here. Oh, no. Do you see a slot that would fit the, the semicircle? Semicircle. The, sem the semicircle. That's right. It's the square hole. Okay. Up next. Ah, I love this so much. We know what hole that goes the into, triangle. right? Triangle. That's right. The square hole. And up la up next, we have the arch. The arch. The arch. You guessed it. The arch. It goes in the square oh, hole. God. All right, all right. Well, well, why are we watching this, Christopher? Talk to me. Uh, the it's a task. There's no there's no rules, and he's this woman is is stressed out like so many of us as teachers uh, when kids are kids are messing around with rules that we haven't actually stated. Uh, if if the rule if the question is which, how can I get this thing into the into the bin? That's right every time. Plus a lot of those. Uh, a lot of those shapes, like the triangle, the semicircle, do in fact have a square cross section. So uh, yeah, I love, uh, there's, there's an ambiguity suggested by the task that is really stressing out, really stressing out the person out. He's not actually a teacher. Uh, I think it was shared on TikTok and, and then on Twitter as uh, a, a user experience designer watching a uh, watching a user test go down. Uh, but it it feels a lot like yeah, uh, feels a lot like. Uh, like a, a teacher watching something that with with a task that you know you spent all you, sp you stayed up late last night making this task and then kids just kids just shred it. So there's like a lot of uh, emotional attachment to to both sides for me. So just love it. I could watch that as, as a long. designer, as a former teacher, as someone who makes shape based toys for for children, as you do, as, um, as a rule breaking student. As a rule breaking student, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this hits a lot of different aspects of your identity. Yeah, I love this. I think this was shared with you and me, both tagged, I think, by Javier Cabezas, who uh, really understood uh, the people he was dealing with there with this one. So nice stuff. I'm super excited to hear from you for Research Minute right now, Christopher, where we're, where we're talking about a very hard, like we have this middle school math curriculum, and in middle school math, there are some areas of math that I find uh, more easier to teach than others. And there's like there's some areas of math that are both hard to teach and have available to them lots of tricks. Like they're both hard to teach, um, they're conceptually rich, and there's like a pile of tricks that you can offer students that uh, you know will get correct answers a lot of the time, but don't build the kind of understanding that transcends, crosses across grades. Um, so I'm really excited for Christopher to share with us some research that can help us uh, make our way through a challenging area of mathematics. Talk to us, Christopher. Yeah, so three minus negative two, Jay, you're, gonna, you're thinking about three minus negative two. How do you, how do you think about that? Uh, I always thought of it as taking away two negatives, so that would make them positive. Uh, nice. How about how about you, Dan? Where are you at with uh, with three minus negative two? What goes into your head? Yeah, I well, I know that you ha if you have two horizontal dash thingies, they turn into they they get they create a relationship and turn into a plus sign, and then it's three plus two is five. Nix the tricks, Dan. Nix those tricks. I, uh, I would. I would. I mean, I mean, that's a that's a perfectly valid way of thinking, Dan. Uh, if you were just if you were to talk with a group of middle school teachers, like twelve middle school teachers, and ask them about um, their favorite ways to teach uh, subtracting integers, first thing you would hear would be a big groan because, as you pointed out, super difficult uh, thing to teach, thing for kids to think about, but. Uh, but also really interesting. And you, the second thing you'd hear is, is a, at least a dozen different strategies. I'm just gonna show you a couple of uh, possibilities that may resonate with one or more of the teachers out there. Certainly uh, some version of each of these uh, was present in my own seventh grade classroom uh, when I was a classroom teacher here in St. Paul. We've got elevation, right? Where there's, uh, there's an octopus under the sea. How far away is that octopus from the airplane that, that's way up high? Uh, we've got weight and, uh, and balloons. Tippy the turtle, ring a bell for either you, Jay, or, or Dan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, go go search uh, SNL Tippy the turtle uh, at some point. Tippy walks in and, and wants to ship to the post office and wants to ship a box of helium balloons, uh, and concludes that that the post office owes him money. Uh, we've got uh, what else can we do? Oh, we can make elaborate games. Uh, this is a ver this is a card game that comes from one of the NCTM journals uh, a number of years ago. Uh, 
embedded in this particular version of, of a game is the red and black chip idea, which is often associated with what Jay was saying with, I'm going to take away, uh, take away two negatives from my positive three. We've got number lines. We've got, uh, ooh, integers may have to do, walk it off, right? So we're, we're pro as teachers, we're problem solvers. We try all kinds of things, credits and debts. And uh, I want to tell you just quickly about uh, some research about all of this. Because most of the time, uh, when I'm a classroom teacher or if I'm, if I'm working at Desmos, most of the time the temptation is, as I ask the two of you, how do you think about it? But one of the really hard pieces of uh, the job of being a teacher and of being a curriculum developer is that the way that kids need to be introduced to things is not necessarily the way that I think of it. Partly because kids are novices and I'm an expert and partly because most kids think differently than I do. Most kids think differently from your average math teacher. So uh, the thing I really appreciate about this particular uh, piece of research is that it digs really deeply into uh, something that on the surface seems sort of, sort of uh, simple, easy to polish off with a rule, um, but sits at, at this really interesting um, intersection of kids' minds, formal mathematics, and uh, curriculum. So Aaron Glancy and Christy Pettis, down the right hand corner there. And there's uh, links to their work in the show notes if you're interested. They are were grad students at the University of Minnesota when they were doing this work. And what they wanted to do was uh, identify a context that had some, some cat identified as being particularly helpful for uh, students who are meeting this idea of adding and subtracting integers for the first time. So they were interested in uh, thinking about integers as different from Num just plain old counting numbers. And one of the things that's interesting about integers is that they have opposites, but they wanted to see if they could find some kind of, uh, opposites that like spoke to kids' experience um, in a way that maybe debits and credits don't. Like if I'm thinking about a debt, if I'm a sixth grader, uh, I don't have a lot of experience with being in debt. And if I have $5, but I owe you $7, I still have $5. So that experience of, of uh, come and take feeling it. Opposite. Come and take it. Yep. Yeah. So uh, multiple representations of integers. Like it's important that there be. Uh, I, I don't just think of negative one as as one less than zero, but also as like a, a combination. So uh, negative three plus two is another representation of negative one, and that seems to be important to the to the um, being able to think about subtracting integers. They want there to be a natural zero. Like zero makes sense. Whereas in temperatures, maybe zero done, maybe zero is sort of arbitrary. Uh, they wanted operations to match kids' prior knowledge. Before you meet integers, addition never just magically turns into subtraction. But then they we we start teaching them integers, and it's keep change change. They wanted whatever ideas that kids had about what addition and subtraction mean to carry over into this new world. And then thinking about equivalence. Um, as a, as a unifying theme rather than a, a transformation. So not keep change, change, but uh, there are a whole bunch of different things that are equivalent to negative one. And three minus negative two is equivalent to three plus five in that they both get us the same answer, um, but that that's an end result of having done a lot of work. So what they did is they developed, uh, identified, developed a really fun uh, game around floats and anchors. This is, uh, the starting place where we uh, decided at Desmos that we were developing some uh, integer work. And this was a really effective framework to try to work with. So we started and talked with uh, Aaron and Christy in our early phases. Uh, this is what their artwork looks like. Uh, we have access to a lot more uh, design resources than your average graduate student. So we had our own. Uh, beloved Jenny Wales do some new work for us. And this is what floats and anchors now looks like uh, in the world of Desmos. Uh, I think we're back-ish. Christopher might be coming along in a second. We'll see about that. That was uh, some internet streaming issues. I'm having a bunch of that lately because the children in, um, in my area won't stop learning, you know, from their Zoom school. And I started to feel annoyed about it, but what can I do? I, you know, I'm an educator at heart, so I'm happy they're learning. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Let's see if Christopher pops on. 
Uh, anyway, floats and anchors, love that um, activity. Gonna try to pull it up on my side as well because I dig. I think that you like. There's different ways to be right and wrong. Uh, that's one of our design principles. Um, different ways to be right and wrong and, that are interesting and creative. Let's see here. So while we wait for Christopher, yeah, jumping on Ooh, here. One. That's the new one. This one's gonna be in our show notes. You're yeah. welcome to use this one. Yeah, here's our, our new one. That one was uh, created in partnership with uh, CPM and their curriculum, and we did some other stuff for ours. And um, just really dig all of this. That's pretty, pretty. Let's go. Yeah, you know what time it is. Time for a submarine animation time. Um, anyway, and uh, yeah, add anchors, subtract floats, same same deal. Cool stuff. Anyway, uh, my apologies to Christopher for kicking, for kicking him off and uh, thanking him. I think we are at an okay spot with Christopher to say so long to him. That's some research that I, I love having Christopher on the team for lots of reasons. Um, but one is that he does a really excellent job of integrating research that you know can be up here abstract in the academy and bringing it into uh, our world and using that to create some activities that we know have a, a you know a, a kind of grounding. Uh, in empirical research. And lo and behold, they work really well for, ki for kids uh, because of just that reason. So we'll say so long to Christopher, um, bye Christopher. And um, the show notes, if you don't know, show notes are gonna be in the, the YouTube or the Facebook uh, link shortly um, after, the, after the stream. Check the YouTube description or on Facebook, I'll add um, links to all this, it'll be a lot of fun. So here's the deal with uh, what Jay's gonna share with you folks. I love this. Here's the deal, uh, you folks have run activities uh, with your students for a while now, let's say, and um, they're normie, they're kind of normal, like uh, like this right here, you know? And it's about time for you to spice these up a little bit in some ways that like are not particular, but me, I'm seeing like a fuse on a, being lit and you know the, the, the lit fuse kind of chasing the end of it. Uh, this right here, when your students click that, like here's uh, Audrey McLaren who saw Jay uh, offer this um, earlier on Twitter and uh, she says, hey, write something, anything. And the student says, what? And then the student says, oh, cool, it sparkles. So that is available to you and uh, your students if you wanna tune in for another 10 minutes here uh, with me and Jay. So Jay, show them uh, how this is done from, the, from uh, you know, basic to advanced here. We'll cover a, a little bit of ground. Over to you. Sure, uh, so I'll start with the, the, the CL side of it because that's probably what I know best. And then I'll, I'll kind of try to limp through a, a graph demo after that. Um, but let's see, uh, so in this, uh, this sketch here, uh, I, I loaded it with an image already, we'll get to in a bit, uh, and a timer, but uh, let's say I have, I'm just gonna make a point for now, just so that I can talk about uh, where the, the cursor is gonna go on the screen. Uh, so I'll make a, a point with some sliders. And then just so we can make sure we see it, I'll like turn off drag and make it a little bit bigger. There you go. Um, now, when I, when, I, when I go in for my sketch here, uh, my cursor moves, the point doesn't move, there's no CL connection in there. Uh, and the goal here is to make it so that we can use a movable point in the graph uh, to to kind of follow uh, the, the cursor as it moves. Sketch a sketch a thing though, uh, Jay. Just just prove yeah. it. Let's be sure here. Okay, so yeah, nothing's happening. It's, it's a sketch with a point. It's static. All right, let's uh, show us how it's done here in the computation layer. Yeah. Uh, so you're actually going to only need uh, it, it's one source, and you're just going to use two number sinks here. Remember from the graph. Uh, I had the two numbers I had, uh, I think it was X1 and I had, I'm just going to set that to whatever the current location of the, um, uh, on, on the sketch. So or let me, let me do the double edit thing. Uh, you so zoom, what I want to do is there, I want to, I want to pull, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, so from this sketch component here, uh, I'm going to pull, uh, the, the current X value uh, and the current y value, so current, uh, the current x value for the x coordinate, uh, and the current y value for the the y coordinate. And all that says is uh, that slider uh, x one and the slider y one. I'm going to set it to the current location of my x cursor and the current y location of my my x cursor. Uh, so Let me now just when I preview, check my check my understanding there, if you don't mind going back there real fast. So the the this yeah. says this says look at um, the sketch that I am inside of this script says look at that and then you're grabbing a some information from this sketch called current x which is a predefined property that we have available at the property store for computation layer authors to go and get 
And we're taking that and we are assigning that to that X subscript one and Y subscript one that we have in the graph, which represents uh, that point or, or controls that point. Am I following so far? Yep, exactly. Right on, uh, let's see what happens here. Cool, yeah, uh, if I preview, you can see that now the, the little red dot kind of follows follows my, my cursor. Cool, but I want like, I want a couple things here. I want an image or something like that, and I want surprise. I don't know in what order we should talk about that, but uh, <laughs> like I want I want both of those things where the student's like, oh, I'm just in an, uh, yet another sketch screen and this interesting mm -hmm. activity my teacher has created. And, but also uh, they put the mouse down, the trackpad down, and they are surprised by an image. What can you do for us here? Uh, uh, well, the image is easy because I can just set the, the center of any image to be uh, this point here. So I'll just use this heart screen. I think it's actually, it's one of the two uh, first two in that uh, activity that is in the show notes. Uh, Zoom it in for me there. Guy. What's going on uh, on that heart there? Yeah, uh, I just I just took the, the coordinate and put it in for the, the center of that image. Um, and I, I can do all the little things I want to make it fit nicely. Let's, let's make it a little smaller because I don't want a giant heart to cover the whole screen. Uh, let's not place it behind so that I can see it nice and clear. Uh, and now when I when I preview that that red dot is replaced with, with the heart because it's just the, the center of that that image. Uh, I feel like this is a throwback. Was, this is like a throwback to uh, like like early web where like you could go to any website and it would like hijack the cursor and change the cursor to like any random yeah, thing you might uh, see on some like GeoCities or blog or whatever. Uh, this has that same kind of feel, that same kind of like reckless energy that I'm just I'm I'm, I'm in love with here. Keep going. Yeah, the, fu the funny thing there is that it actually kind of came up because of that. I was like sitting up late at night once thinking like I haven't done anything just for fun and really irresponsible recently. And uh, I remembered like I was you either had me as a student or you were me as a student. Uh, I was a kid that went through the whole library and changed all of the cursors on the computers uh, just to mess with the librarian. Uh, so, you know, I thought, what if I made another cursor here that we could that we could mess with uh, mess with uh, people on and that's kind of where it came from makes so much sense uh, <laughs> um anyway the other thing uh that you're, you're talking about was the uh the the surprise there right because right now here let's go back to preview uh the heart's kind of always there so th th there's nothing there that's like what is it what oh it glitters or whatever mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. and and we want it to only appear like after the student like starts sketching so we have another thing for that and that that'll tell us uh, how long the sketch is uh, that you're currently making. So not the total length of all of the sketches on the screen, uh, but just the current stroke that you're in. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number uh, and I'm going to use that to tell the graph whether or not we're, we're sketching or not, um, just by making uh, another number sync out of it. So I'll just name it I. I know the, the graph team is laughing at me right now because I'm using a a single capital letter here when I should be using something. Zoom, like zoom it for or, us there. You know, zoom, zoom it for us okay, there. Here you go. What do you got right there? Sorry about that. You're right. There you go. Okay, um, just some number. It's yeah. not in the calculator yet. What do you What is What are you gonna do with nope. that? Yeah. So uh, again, I'm gonna look at uh, this component, uh, and instead of looking at uh, the whole sketch, I want to look at just the current stroke. So this is the uh, the stroke that you are currently on, not anything that you've done previously. Uh, and from there, I'm just going to pull the uh, the total stroke length. So this is the length of the current stroke. So it'll be at zero, and then as you sketch, it increases. Once you let go of the mouse, uh, it'll it'll go back to zero. Uh, That's some number. Okay. You, yep, Got it. Goes from zero to increases, and then and then back to zero. Uh, and using that, I know that like let's say I make my my number i. I know I could go Zoom the other direction. Zoom it for us there, would you? Yeah. Hey, let's okay. say I have that number there. So this, like, you can imagine that as you sketch, like, it's going to start, it's going to start to increase. Super helpful. So I'll, I'll set it back to zero. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to restrict uh, the showing of this image uh, based on the value of that variable. So I'll say that I has to be greater than zero, meaning that your stroke, your current stroke length has to be greater than nothing. You have to have sketched something. Uh, and if I zoom out here, I just messed up my window. Here we go. Let's 
That's so clutch right there. And that move, I think, is one of the most most generalizable, most common moves I, I see in Desmos graphs is to throw in some kind of variable and, and, and into the curly braces and say, hey, only show this thing if that is true. So I just want you folks to like look at that close, make sure you're, you're cool with that. Once that eye starts going up, then it'll show. Until then, it won't. So yeah, you can drive. Yep, there it is. And it shows. Before that, it won't. And uh, yeah, we'll see it. We'll yeah, see it in action. That works. Yeah, so now you can see it's gone. the current stroke length is zero. It's not there. And then as soon as it starts getting Just again, like that. I want you folks to take this idea, this activity will be in the show notes. Uh, grab this, copy and paste it so you can ex examine the computational layer script a little more um, so you can uh, swap out the image. And I want to see you folks sending us links at, you know, at Desmos or Desmos Live, um, hashtag it, where, you know, your students see your face, you know, they put the mouse, the, the mouse down, track by down, and you're, and you're smiling back at them all the while they're, they're, uh, they're, you know, drawing on the, on the sketch screen. That, that really changed some hearts, I think, in this particular moment, you know, we're so far from, from a break and vaccines are just rolling out, you know, people need that right now. Um, I think Jay's got a couple more tricks up his sleeve to share with us, like how to make this like a little bit more dynamic if you want to stick around for that. And then we'll uh, say so long. Jay, show him a, a few more minutes worth of some sure. fun here, would you? Yeah, okay. This is where I really start to stumble, but we're going we're gonna to give it a try. Um, uh, if I, maybe if I want more than, than one heart, uh, I could uh, think of hearts going in a circle. So I'll, I'll start with my coordinate that I'm moving around and then I'll, I'll add some, let's just set a list here for my angles so that I know what I'm looking for. Uh, and then same thing for my, my Y coordinate. Sorry, let me zoom in again. Um, so angle. There we go. Graph team, don't be mad at me now. Uh, and if I make it a slider, I can, I can move this around and I can see like, it kind of goes around where that, that point is. Uh, so this but, is like this is like so, the only this is like the one of the, the, one of the most uh, best applications of trigonometry I've ever seen. Where what you've done there with that cosine and the, of the angle and the x coordinate and the sine sine and the y has created the unit circle basically around x one and y one. If I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, so as that angle moves yeah. around, it's just going to move in a circle um, that, that's one unit away. Is that right? Uh, the center of the heart is yes. Right. Okay. Got it. Okay, cool. Carry on. Awesome. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. And so if I, if I want more, instead of making it just one variable or one value, I'll say, uh, let's do like pi over six. Oh, he's doing a list, maybe. folks. Yeah. That's Pins like and needles. Things here so that Pins I don't have to make a whole bunch of images. Uh, let's, oh, let's not do that. With the dot, dot, dot to there interpolate. Look at all yeah. that. Yeah. Wait, hit done and preview real fast. Let me, let me see what that looks like. Does that still have the surprise factor? Oh, no. Let's not do that. Don't you do that. Don't you um, do that. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't hit back. Yeah, press that done and preview. Um, preview. It should. Boom. There you go. You gotta, think about, think about bonus. multiple of your faces around that sketch cursor. Think about <laughs> that. Now what? Now what, Jay? Um. Yeah, uh, I could think about like, let's say I want them to all start from the, the center and move outwards. Uh, and this is uh, made me think of like Suzanne's Suzanne's demo there. Where I wanna I wanna make a, a animation. Um, and she used she used median, so you could say median uh, zero one uh, and t zero. And I can apply this to the the radius of my the radius of my uh, my uh, circle of hearts here. Uh, but this kind of works. It, it's great. It, it, it plays once. Uh, if you if you're using a slider, I could have it go from zero to one over and over. So I could I could change this go like zero to one. Right. And I could just repeat it over and over again. Uh, but eventually, I kind of want them to have like a whole bunch of uh, randomness going on. I don't want them all just increasing out at the at the, the same uh, rate and resetting all at the same time. Uh, so I'm actually going to switch up median uh, just because median will will start at zero. It'll, it'll increase to in this case one, uh, and then it's it, it kind of like stays at one. Now, uh, but I want it to like go from zero to one, and then zero to one, and then zero to one, uh, and then just continue that. So I'm actually going to swap this. Or sorry, first I'm going to change the slider out. 
so that the slider goes instead of zero to one, uh, just plays forever. Uh, and instead of starting at zero, increasing from zero to one over one second, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, t zero uh, mod of one here. So now it just kind of every second continues to to uh, spread out. And then if I want to make it a little bit random, I can like adjust the speed of each one by creating like 12 random uh, random 12 you 12 there. random numbers yeah. there you're multiplying mm -hmm. okay i follow that part the mod is a the mod is a tricky one for me but keep going keep going yeah, so, okay cool yeah so they, they all you see start in the center but they move out at different rates and then they all reset once they they hit that outer that outer like radius um and we don't want them like disappearing as soon as they hit the outside so one thing i uh I know is that that same animation variable uh, is starting at zero and increasing to one over the, the time it takes the heart to reach the edge. So if I want it to start at an opacity of one and then fade away as it uh, moves out, I can just take the opacity uh, and subtract, or take the animation and subtract it from one so that now each one starts at one uh, and then becomes zero by the time it hits the edge. And it doesn't look like they're resetting, it just looks like they're, they're kind of fading into nothingness. That's so um, beautiful. Show, show them the, the full effect. Extra. Show them the whole the full thing here. Yeah. Let's get rid of all of this stuff. Distracting stuff first. There you go. Preview. Yeah, so you have nothing. And then once you start sketching, you get you get your hearts. Yeah. Jay, you're dangerous, <laughs> man. I love it. Yeah, that's that recklessness. Um there. I cannot see a mathematical application here for education that is at the moment. I'm sure our, our, our viewers will find some for us, but I do see the application to delight in a moment that could use as much delight as possible. A uh, really fun example of how to use computation layer and certainly a lot of interesting mathematics for educators here to think about uh, with trigonometry and uh, mod operations, all of that. So. Um, folks in the chat, give it up for Jay here for coming on for the umpteenth time to share something interesting about math, activity building, computation layer. Uh, Jay, you're extremely skilled in your work, but you're also a very generous uh, teacher with all of us teachers. So thanks for being here. And thanks all of you for showing up. It, uh, it fills uh, all of our hearts up with a lot of joy to see folks who use our work. And I see the scheming. I see the scheming in the chat already. Um, people are up to a lot of good already yeah. talking about lots of interesting ideas. Be sure to tag us on those on Twitter or Facebook yes. or somewhere. Oh, I, I did oh, forget, to, tell I forget to mention. Um, so Plug it. also our, uh, yeah, every every month we run these uh, like activity building uh, computation layer like challenges sort of uh, through Twitter and, and now through Facebook. Um, so if, if you make one of these, it's actually this month's challenge. So post it into the, the Facebook group or post it on, on Twitter with the hashtag, uh, it's matchmycl. Um, let me just write it out. It's just hashtag match ICL. And what we do at the end of the month is we take everybody's submissions, um, throw it into a collection and and uh, put it out there for people to, to use and, and play with. We'll get a link in the show notes also to a subscription to Jay's uh, Jay and John Rose monthly newsletter. They just share cool stuff like this every month. You should get on that. So check the show notes right after this in the description of the YouTube link or uh, over at Facebook for some fun stuff. And uh, yeah, you folks stay safe and we'll see you next week. Uh, same great time, same great place. Thanks for being with us. So long, folks.